So I'm here with Marty Merton, and he has a YouTube channel, and uh, he's going to interview me, and uh, I'll record it, and I'll leave a, uh, a link in the description or in the comments so that you can check out his YouTube channel, and uh, when you go over there, you can subscribe and let him know that I sent you. Okay, Martin, we're ready to go. You are now watching people's opinions on popular topics. So, uh, what's your name and what brings you out here today? Uh, I'm Father Anthony Hannon. I'm a priest with the Archdiocese of uh, Ottawa Cornwall. I'm a Catholic priest. And uh, I love freedom and the truth and our country. And uh, I thought it was important that, uh, you know, people know that there are priests who can see the truth as well and are on their side because the, uh, the kind of the, uh, the official church seems to be uh, lock and step with the, with the popular narrative. Why do you think they're so lock and step with the official narrative of the lockdowns? Well, have you heard of uh, uh, Denis Rencourt? Um, he's a professor emeritus, I guess, from uh, uh, University of Ottawa. Um, good guy to <clears throat> look up. He's a, a doctor of uh, physics. And he was asked this question and I love the answer that he gave. He said that uh, anyone in the professional class uh, very early on in their training learn that they have to kind of turn their brain off and adapt the worldview, lock and step with what their peers do or they'll never get hired or never get uh, promoted. Now, uh, you know, priests are, 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 are different but kind of the same. And, um, you know, we, we do have common beliefs um, however, um, I would say from day one when we go to the seminary, there's kind of inadvertent consequences. And although people see us as leaders, we're actually trained in practice to be followers. So, uh, so I think that's, that's a big, big part of it. And their establishment. And, uh, you know, the bishops too, they... Um, they were chosen to be bishops, not because they have the type of personality that confronts um, status quo, but because they have the type of personality that works with the status quo. Do you think the lockdown has infringed upon any of our charter rights? Well, of course. Not charter rights, I mean fundamental freedom rights, right? Which ones do you think? Uh, well, our free, everything. Our freedom of speech, freedom to work. Come on. our, our uh, uh, freedom to love, honestly, because love and freedom are responsibilities. So, so they've, they've, they, you know, when they when they lock down nursing homes, they've taken away our possibility to to exercise our responsibilities and love um, our elder, elderly relatives or friends. This is this is this is really crimes against humanity, and a great injustice to the elderly, uh, to the young, to the children. You know, it's it's really really bad. What's it been like for you being a father over the last year of the lockdown? Well, I'm kind of uh, in a unique situation. Um, most people think of priests in a parish, but you know the parish would be kind of their job, and the being a priest is kind of like our state of life. So uh, a few years ago, I asked my archbishop uh, if I could leave parish ministry and start a retreat center. So I have a, a silent retreat center and uh, for individual retreats. And uh, the way the past year and a bit has changed is that many, more, many, many more uh, individuals have reached out to me uh, locally and from around the world um, because uh, they don't know how to deal with being gaslit at their parishes. So I've met more uh, people who are awake and, and who can see what's going on, and much of my ministry is trying to affirm them that they're not crazy. Thank you. How, uh, how do you think we, Canada has treated its senior population over the last year? Yeah, well, like I said, it's, it's terrible. It, these are this is elder abuse on extreme scale. Um, 
And then now when they when they so called open it up to visitors, you know, if they you know if the the visitors have to uh, wear a face covering, um, they can't hug them. Are you kidding me? This is this is terrible. And uh, of course, in Canada, with the medical aid in dying, made which I call medical aid in killing, right? I think they're I think they're putting pressure on the elderly too. Uh, you know, a friend of mine, uh, her dad um, was healthy for his age. He was 92, uh, but he was living at home. He was, you know, in, in good enough shape. And uh, some of her family members, some of her siblings. Uh, kind of put the pressure on him to get uh, the experimental injection. And a few days after that, he got sick. A few days after that, he went to the hospital. And a few days after that, he was dead. And he and uh, she thinks that uh, that uh, they probably presented to him that look, you're 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 COVID positive, and this is not going to be good for you. Do you want to? If you'd like, you can end it now, or you can go through two or three weeks of hell. Because she saw him on a Zoom, he couldn't, you know, none of the family members could be there in person. So she saw him on a Zoom, and she said he was perfectly lucid. And then all of a sudden, the doctor said, oh, we're just going to give him a shot to relax him. And then uh, a few minutes later, he was dead. So we know one thing. He was not COVID positive. He had no symptoms. He got an injection. Then he was hospitalized and tested positive. This is elder abuse. This is crazy. Wow. So, um, what are your final thoughts on the rally today? Well, you know, I've been coming to Freedom Rallies. I came here on July 1st, then again on August the 29th. I came here February the 14th. I've been down to Cornwall, down to Toronto, to Adamson's Barbecue, uh, that type of thing. Uh, but I haven't come every week. Um, and uh, last week, I couldn't, or last Saturday, I couldn't come, but I saw the uh, thousands and thousands marching, and I thought, you know, I need to uh, come down here and let others know that uh, despite what the upper echelons of the Catholic Church is, is presenting, um, y you know, you are on the side of the truth. And, uh, you know, you're my heroes. So it's a, it's a low turnout, but I've, I've met some people that I already knew and they didn't know necessarily that I would be coming to these things. And so it's a very, ha very happy day in that sense. This is, this is really an opportunity to, to network with people. Eh? I mean, this is not going to uh, stop Trudeau or Ford from their agenda. You know, and hopefully people can encourage one another. I've already spoken to a few persons who, who say, well, they're wearing their masks and when they go shopping and I'm trying to say stop it. it this does no good this does no good if uh, everyone goes to the grocery store and puts on a mask. Christians are supposed to follow the rule of the land unless it contradicts with the Bible. Mm -hmm. Do you think the lockdowns contradict with the Bible? Of course yeah yeah definitely definitely breaks a number of the Ten Commandments. So there should be heaps more Christians out here. Well, should people are in denial, right? I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not. God, the Lord is the judge. I don't. I don't know what's going on with them. You know, if it was easy to just explain to them rationally, uh, you know, I come from a background of uh, addictions and codependency, and I learned a long time ago, 35 years ago, that um, you know you can't reason out denial, and I don't try to argue reality with delusional people. So um, even though someone might have faith, it doesn't stop them from having blind spots, you know. Um, but anyway, it breaks the commandment against lying because there is no plague. It breaks the commandment against killing because wearing a mask uh, does harm to yourself. It breaks the commandment against uh, the first commandment, superstitions, because um, you know, wearing a mask to stop uh, a coronavirus is about as effective as having a rabbit's foot. So, yeah, people need to repent. Christians ought to repent and live in the truth. And uh, following orders is not an excuse. 
because even with legitimate authority, you know, honor your mother and your father and all legi legitimate authority. And, and I have a solemn promise of obedience. Um, but uh, no legitimate authority can order someone to do an immoral thing. We have, a, we have a responsibility and a duty to disobey immoral orders. And that's, that's, that's the Christian duty above just following orders. That didn't work with, with uh, soldiers who committed crimes in wars who said they were just following orders. And I don't think it's going to work when we meet uh, Jesus for our particular judgment. Uh, last thing, there are some people at home right now unsure if they should come out. And uh, what would you say to those Canadians sitting on their couch? Faith and reason over fear, right? Um, God gave us a brain, let's use it. Um, have some faith. I'm gonna, as far as these experimental injections, so-called vaccines, um, I'm, uh, I'm volunteering for the control group. <laughs> and uh, I'll be quite open about it. I will not uh, take any injection from anybody. And, uh, you know, they can send me to a quarantine hotel up in Nunavut if they want. But uh, I'm not going that way. And please, God, by the grace of God, you know, I don't, it's easy to talk, right? We'll see what happens. But, um, uh, yeah, we, we have to have faith. We have to have courage. And uh, don't live by fear. We come out. I've been going to all these freedom rallies. There have been tens of thousands of Canadians uh, going to these freedom rallies for the past a year and over a year. And uh, have you heard of anyone getting sick, going to hospital, going into uh, ICU, um, or dying from it? No, not one. We shake hands, we hug, we meet people from all over Canada. Um, I think my uh, immune system's stronger for coming out here. And, uh, you know, get rid of that uh, superstitious mask. Come on out, experience some normalcy, and uh, meet some real friends. Well, thank you very much for your time, Father. You're very welcome, Art. God bless you. Yay.